This is basically a crash course from starting uni to maybe getting a job as a junior games designer. I'm Zachary Priest. I was uh, at SAFS last year. I graduated. I've moved country, and now I'm a junior games designer at Ubisoft. Uh, these slides will be on my Twitter afterwards. They'll be on a Google Drive. Just go and grab them uh, because there's going to be a lot of content coming like really quickly. Okay. So as I said, I'm a staffs graduate. Uh, I graduated with a first. I'm a junior games designer working on Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, I can't talk about it. Don't ask questions at the end about it. Uh, I, yeah, but yeah, I moved abroad to escape the Brexit game, but you know how it is. I wanted to do this talk mainly because no game designers have ever come in to do talk at staffs within my like, entire four years at university. So I've flown here and done it, but you know, there's four this year. Uh, so I just mainly want to answer a lot of questions that I had while at university. You know, when you're working on your projects, you know, what do you need in them? What, how should you approach these things? Like, you know, how do you make your project actually like uh, appealing to an employer. Just stuff like, you know, do I need to put it on Steam? Like, you know, you don't need to do that, don't worry. But yeah, so I want to focus firstly on the main thing I heard every game designer I ever spoke to say to me ever at every industry event, and it was this, just make games. I've heard this so many times, and it was so infuriating because it just doesn't answer the questions about what you need to do, how you should do it, and it is just, it's infuriating. It's so much more than that. It's about, you know, your process and how you approach developing these things. So before we focus on that, I want to circle back to what you should really be doing at university. So year one, the most important thing you could do, uh, that's my project over there, I did in year one, it's terrible. Um, make friends and connections, you know. Go to game jams, go to uh, events, you know, talk to your classmates. You need to build, like, people that you can access and ac uh, just ask questions to like continually. It's so important for like later on when you get in university, just having people you can access quickly. And learn the basics of coding, you know, learn C sharp, learn blueprint. These are vital because if you want to build stuff, you've got to know how to do it. You can't just depend on, you know, your programmer mate, because you know he might drop out and this it's it's just so problematic unless you learn it yourself. Uh, you know, and Make your first playable game over the summer. Like year one's kind of chill, you can get away with dosing around a bit, but you need to make your first playable thing over the summer. You have something that you can say, you know, you can get back in second year and be like, hey, look, I made this, I learned from this. If you make your first portfolio piece while you're just starting, it will just put you miles ahead of everyone else. You'll be so ahead for like year two engines and it will give you room to flex. So getting on to year two, uh, I made a card game, don't do that. Uh, you'll make the lecturers very mad, but make you know even more friends, even more connections. Like you just truly need to like invest yourself in university. Whether that's going to like Stats Fight Club or just going to the other video game stuff, just try get around and talk to as many people as possible. Now you've got theoretically you've got your first portfolio piece, so you can kind of go to you know places like you know Yuki, EGX, and you can talk to the other designers here and be like. Hey, you know, I did this. I presented it like this. You know, wh what feedback would you have for me at this point? And you'll get some useful stuff then. You know, and you can use your engine, your design modules to make some cool stuff now because <laughs> theoretically, you spent first year uh, summer learning how to make a really cool game, and now you've got a little bit more room to actually create your own thing and have your own approach to it. And then coming on to the big one, third year. So first off. Don't make a game. I've seen so many people try and do this. I tried to do this. I think it is one of the biggest mistakes you can do. I put all my effort into making a game, and it's just not what you want to do. Like, you need to make a really good vertical slice. You need to make an amazing 10 minutes, not a good 45 or an OK hour. This is mainly because if you keep it simple and keep it small, uh, it'll, this will be explained further on why it's a good idea. It will give you a chance to you know, build something that actually feels good and isn't very janky. You want to take a simple mechanic, you know, how much can you get that mechanic? How much can you change it? How do you keep it engaging? It's something that can be viewed and understood at a glance. They don't have to try to understand the intricacies of a system. And you know, treat your FYP like a full-time job. You're at university, you're playing nine grand a year, you, you know, you're going all out with this. You need to fully commit to your final year project and document the shit out of it. Everything you can do, every little thing you can do, 
just make it make a beautiful game design document. Show that you're just not a programmer. You know, like, oh yeah, you know, uh, I know how to code stuff, but like, why did you do that? How did you do that? Like, wh how? What did you do to make it fun? Like, did you like scope down? Did you change things? And then make sure you've got that 1.0 document. This will give you an amazing way. Like, this is the start of my game, and this is how it ended up. How did it change? Right? Then. After you're working on it, you know, play test, see what your mates say, get feedback on that, and iterate your game upon that. And moving on to portfolio stuff now, I can't stress this enough. They don't care who you are. When you make a portfolio, do not have a massive introduction about, you know, you're John and you love games. Because we're looking at this stuff, you have these massive intros about who you are, and they, they don't care, they want to see what you've done. So just <coughs> Quickly moving over to like my, my portfolio, which is no means the best kind of thing, but there's not many viewable game design portfolios out there. So just some simple stuff, you know, this is quite zoomed out, but you can get an idea. You want your profession title at the very top, because if you apply, if you're a game designer applying for an LD job or vice versa, they're just gonna be like, you know, th this guy's clearly shotgunning. Like just apply for one role. And then you want a very short description, you know, like, I'm John, I like making games, you know, really short. And then if you look at this zoomed out, the very first thing you see is these massive project, you know, if, if, a, if an interviewer opens this, they're going to see where it is immediately. They're going to go, okay, there's a project. Because they're not going to read most of this. They just purely want to get the project and see all its content. You've got yeah, these giant capture images, and being able to switch around your projects very quickly. There's a little thing underneath my name where you can quickly just change projects. Now, moving on to more content-based stuff, the most important part is a trailer. Trailers are fantastic, but don't have these long panning intro stuff. Don't say, oh, it's, it's a John Smith game. You're not Hideo Kojima. No one gives a crap about who you are. Don't have a studio mm -hmm. logo in front of it. Don't even have the Unreal stuff. Just jump straight into the gameplay, because you've made a game that can be identified what it is very quickly. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, um, then download link. Put it on itch.io. Show they actually exist. You know, they, they want to see that it's a real thing. So then, you know, documentation link. They want to see that it exists as well. They're not going to read all of it, but, you know, say, like, hey, I actually did make a document. And then, you know, just a really short elevator pitch what your game is. And then moving on to more content stuff, because a lot of people have their portfolio just as this. And a lot of people are, oh, you know, like, here, okay, cool, he's made a game. But, you know, how did you think about it? Have this scroll down a little bit. At this point, if you're a recruiter, you've probably seen that. I'm going, you know, I might pass him on to the guy who's going to interview him. And then the game designer who's going to look at your stuff will look at this bit and see if you're actually worth interviewing. So, do some, you know, really good in-depth breakdowns. You know, how did you do things? Why did you do things? You know, your iteration, your progress. If someone sees that you've put this much effort into it, like, just at a glance, they're going to be like, you know, we might give them a shot, you know, have a talk to them. So then just, you know, hit your breakdowns about stuff. You know, just show your thought process. You know, include your spreadsheets, your flow charts, how you balance things, why you balance things, why did you do it like that? Your iteration, just completely splurge a love letter to your game that you've treated like a full-time job for like six months. And then, of course, videos. Like, it's in, you can quickly get an idea of what your game is. Like, I didn't even have to explain what this is to you, but all these pictures and stuff, you're kind of like, okay, I kind of get the concept. Um, and then, yeah, as I said, crash course, very quick on this. Networking, that's my business card. Blizzard haven't gone after me yet. But um, I, I remember being very frustrated about networking. Because, you know, what does that mean? Like, what does it mean to network? It's great if you've got, like, social skills. If you like the social skills of a baked potato like me, you just talk to them, ask them how they are, how they're doing. You know, what did you do to get in? Okay, great, thanks. And, like, what does that achieve? What it really means is talk to them, get their socials, get their name, get their Twitter, like, you know, find out their LinkedIn stuff. Build a network of people that you can just, you know, you follow around and you engage with just online. This is, I cannot stress the importance of this and it will come into effect later. But, you know, business cards as well, you know, great, simple, quirky, make the interaction memorable, you know. 
and show that you know you can kind of put a fun spin on something as simple as a business card. And then Gradex. This is amazing. Gradex is such an important day. You're exposed to so many people in the industry in such a tight, controlled burst. You want to try and impress them and just make as much networking stuff as you can. Just communicate with people. Some good Gradex tips are get a PC at the end. You're way more accessible that way. You know, get in there early, get it down. Print out your documentation because that makes you look prepared. It makes you look smart. It's like, hey, look, this is how my game started. This is how it ended up. If they ask a question about your game, don't just answer it. Show them it in the game design documentation. Be like, you know, I just wasn't you know, hammering stuff in Unreal at like 3 in the morning. Show that you, you, know, you put proper thought into it. Make sure your game is ready to play. This is where you make that good 10 minutes. They're going to look at it for five, play it for two, if that. Like, there's so many people coming in and rotating out. You need to make that amazing, quick gameplay. That's why if you make a full game, they're only going to see the first two minutes of your tutorial. And it's like, at that point, why bother? Why bother making that, you know, hour-long, like, OK experience, where you could wow them with, like, that three-minute, like, super engaging intro? So I made the mistake here because I, you know, networking, I didn't really get it at that point. But don't just, you know, talk to people, give out your business cards. Talk to them, you know, get their socials, get their LinkedIn, get them, you know, this sort of stuff is in hand. I spent ages talking to Rebellion, and I remember that I had that conversation, and I put it in the covering letter. And I was like, hey, you know, I spoke to Philip Oliver, and I spoke to some other programmers, you know, we really got along, we had a good conversation, and I'd love to work for you guys. And I got an interview offer within 10 minutes of emailing them because of that. If you truly make an impact on these guys, you not only need to impress them, you need to also make it so you can actually follow up afterwards for stuff. Okay. And job hunting. There's a reason why people say, it's not what you know, it's who you know. This is why you network. Like, it, it's so important. Like, if you talk to your mate who works somewhere, and it's like, oh, yeah, there's a, there's a job open at, at Thingy. And it's like, OK, yeah, yeah, I'll put your CV in. Having a good CV and a custom um, covering letter is really important. Make a covering letter template that you can swap out really quickly. So in theory, you spent you know, one, two, three years getting to know people in the industry, getting to know the other students who are now employed in the industry. You've got lots of connections. This is why you do this thing. You need to, this is why people come to university. You can get a first in your degree. You can get a 2-1 in your degree. It doesn't matter. They want to see what you've done. And then it's not what you've done. It's who you know. So you know, wh when you speak to these people to try to get a job, you know, hey, I saw you at so-and-so. Uh, you know, we had a good conversation. Uh, then ask them really politely. And I emphasize on polite because you know, it's, you, you're effectively messing them out the blue, this sort of thing. And if you know, you're polite. They remember you sort of thing. But oh, yeah, yeah, sure, put your CV in. And be prepared to get rejected over and over and over again. I apply for like 100 places. I maybe got like three or four interviews. I have a folder on my Outlook called Rejected just to purely count how many times people told me to bugger off. And don't get picky about where you want to go. You're not going to get to work on your favorite franchise. You're not going to work on your favorite thing, except me, because I love Ubisoft. Um, and, you know, just don't be picky. Be, be prepared to move. You know, I don't work in the UK. I work in Bucharest. And, you know, it's, it's a fun opportunity that you can really go for. And, you know, there's lots of stuff going in China. So if you're up for an adventure, make sure on your LinkedIn that you put your open to op uh, job opportunities. And my CVs are terrible, but just to give you an idea, this sort of thing. I had two CVs, one for a games tech designer and one for a regular designer. Like, I used a website called Canvas for this. You know, it, it makes you look a bit smarter. You've got something that's in like a PDF. It looks a bit cool. It stands out a bit. And you know, just put who you are. But put your portfolio at the top. If they open your CV, bam, portfolio. And lastly, the, as far as this goes, you know, you've got your skills, which you, you know, it's CV stuff. It's CV stuff. But put your experience at the bottom, because there's a high chance you work in student union for a year and a half is good. It's not going to be relevant to you know, applying to a game studio. And then interviews. Okay, Before you get interviewed, 
you'll get a design test. They're usually quite you know, fundamental challenges that you can do. And based upon how you, you know, do the design test, they might give you an interview after that. But be prepared for your game to get destroyed. They will be so mean to your game. They are going to absolutely hammer into it. And this primarily is to test if you will stand by your design decisions. They don't want someone who's going to argue. They want you to see, well, they want to see if you will, you know, kind of change, you'll, you'll iterate a design based upon feedback that someone is giving you. So don't get defensive. And they're going to focus on one project. Cool, you did a year one summer project. You did something in year two. You did junior senior. It doesn't really matter. And it's hard to hear, but you need to do those things because they want to show that you've got a wealth of experience, but they're going to focus on that one project which you put at the top because they've got loads of applicants to go through to just make your best project at the top because that's what the director, whoever's interviewing, is going to say. And you know nothing about these people. The people in industry are a hell of a lot smarter than you. So just don't sit there and argue in an interview for the love of God. I know some people that have, but you're not smarter than these people. Don't try and be. Lastly, show passion for what, you know, your game. They, they want to see you talk about it. You've spent ages working on this. Pour your heart out for what you've, what you've done. It's just, you need to show that you really care about what you've worked on. And be social. Be chit-chatty. These guys, they want someone who's going to fit into the team. It's more important as a junior that you can socially get along with them than it is to have good game design skills, to be honest, because they're going to mold you. They're going to mold you into what the company ideally wants from a game designer. So as long as you can communicate effectively and you can you know, talk to these people, you're a hell of a lot more likely to get hired. And play their games, seriously. Just, if, like, when you know you've got an interview coming up with them, just grab their most recent thing. And just say, you know, hey, oh, oh yeah. hey, I like this. You know, it was pretty good in this game. I felt it could be better. Don't shit on it. Like, seriously, those people work very hard on it. If you just say, oh, this was terrible, this was terrible, like, just don't do that. So this is from my director. This is the most credible part of the presentation. Uh, this guy's been working at Ubisoft for 12 years. Very talented guy, very smart guy. And he says the first thing he wants from junior designers and interviews is show that you have a developer mindset. Understand how and why games do things. You know, being able to change and adapt your vision. Like just understanding, you know, scoping and de-scoping. Be able to answer developer questions. And a tip from me here is use Bud's words in interviews. They love it. Um, and then be open to dialogue. Be able to converse properly. Be an understanding person. Be a person that listens. And one of the key skills in design is being able to resolve conflict. How do you find a middle ground between your vision and the director's vision? How do you propose things that fit in the game's universe? How do you propose things that are appropriate? And you need a capacity to analyze. You, you need to be able to analyze your work, other people's work, and you just need to be able to understand game design in general. And play games. They, they want to hear how you, you, know, you love whatever you're playing, Dota, Siege, whatever it is. They want to hear how you're playing it, why you play it, why you think you play it, and just, just gargle over games for like most of the interview. And lastly, one of the most important things, be able to logically construct rules. <coughs> game design is a lot about breaking things down to their fundamentals. They, you need, they might even ask you something about rock, paper, scissors. Like, how fundamentally is rock, paper, scissors balanced? How does it work? And honestly, don't take what, as I say, is the only route. Like, there's so many ways you can get in the, into the industry. It is unbelievable the amount of different ways you can go about doing things. It's just, if you can find your own route, that's great. I'm merely doing this because no one gave me really any good advice. I was like, damn. I hope this is good advice, but you know, nobody really gave me like, hey, you know, this thing's kind of a good idea. That thing's kind of a good idea. It, w it was just make games. <laughs> and then is where to find me. In summary, work hard, be prepared to get rejected, have fun making stuff, and feel free to DM me on Twitter. These slides will be on Twitter. And uh, yeah, and if you get stuck, you know, talk to your lecturers. They're very hard working. They want to see you succeed. Just give it your all and do your best. Any questions? I got, we've got to bring the mic down first. Here he comes. Oh, speedy boy.
Hi, um, I know you've talked about uh, relocating and being prepared to move. Yeah. Like, uh, has that experience been by any means difficult? Um, have you had to like learn any languages per se? Or uh, I haven't had to luckily because uh, Ubisoft Studios are mainly in English, but there are so I, I'm not sure if the Paris one is in French. I'm not 100% on that. But if they're going to hire you in the first place, then like when they were talking to me, they didn't go, "Do you know Romanian?" Because I'm obviously going to say no. The, all the studio communication documentation is in English. At Ubisoft, we communicate studio to studio quite a bit. You know, I talk to Montreal a fair bit. You know, we talk to Kiev a fair bit. Like, it's all in English. Like, as far as helping you to relocate goes, I, uh, I'm not too sure about other companies because I believe if you're moving with the UK, it's a bit more like, you know, on your jog, do it yourself. But if you're flying internationally, they go very out their way to make you comfortable and make you accommodated. Ubisoft put me up in a place, they paid for my ticket. Like they they want to make sure that, you know, it's as seamless and as painless as possible. But don't be afraid to do it. Like seriously, it's you're young, you can get away with it. Like just bugger off to China for a couple of years and have a bash. You know what I mean? Like you're never gonna get to do that again, are you? And you get to make games. Like that's awesome. Yeah. Does that does that answer the question? Uh, yeah. Okay, sweet. Anyone else? I will be at Ember after this, by the way, so if you want to buy me a bevy and we can have a chat. Uh, so I was wondering uh, how the sort of pipeline works with if you're getting in contact with someone through Twitter or LinkedIn or something like that and you talk to them about job openings, whether or not they sort of put, put you through like a pipeline of talking to the studio afterwards or if you just send them a CV or how that sort of works. Um, a lot of it, if, uh, do you mean if you specifically message someone? Um, it will mainly be that you've already seen something somewhere. So uh, my mate Lewis, who's watching right now, um, he, um, I, I DM'd him. I was like, because I didn't know that you could get people to put CV, CVs in for you. So I DM'd him. I was like, hey, mate, you know, I'm having trouble finding a job. You know, it's been very stressful. Because he worked outside the UK. I was like, how do you do it? You know, how do you go about it? And he said to me, oh, you know, I think there's a GD job open here. He goes, give me a CV and I'll put it in. Like, it's just... You know, and that's, just, that's a mate, you know what I mean? It's like, that's a friend I made because I went to Game Dev Society. And, you know, and I ask him a question. He's like, oh, you know, maybe we can help you out sort of thing. It's, it's a very, but in a professional, if like Philip Oliver, who was, I believe he was the old studio head of Rebellion, you know, I'd send him a nice posh email. I'd be like, oh, dear Mr. Oliver, you know, I, I saw a job going at Rebellion and, I'd, you know, I'd love to have a chance to work there, you know. If it's, if it's a mate, it'd be like, wait, well, you know, give me a job. But if it's like a proper studio contact, don't be like that. You know, just be, be formal, be polite. And then they'll put your CV in, and they'll get in contact with you, and they'll be like, hey, you know, we heard you want to reply, or they'll just send you a design test. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, at the back. Oh, Angle, mate. Uh, so when you move abroad, would you have any recommendations for visa processes for getting into countries that are based abroad? Uh, there's a high chance that you probably won't be able to do anything outside the European Union or anything outside the UK soon, but you know. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a lot to do with the fact that um, you can pretty much work anywhere inside the European Union at the moment. And it's very painless. Like They usually sort out for you. You don't have to go about applying for a visa. Like, I didn't have to do it. I turned up for work and they will like, you know, go to the uh, immigrant office and have a bash and they'll sort it out for you. It's, it's very like they sort it out for you. They, they've got hundreds of people employed at, you know, these studios just for these things alone. So, you know, they want you as a game dev, not as someone who's going to go about sorting out uh, visas and stuff. Yeah, anyone else? Okay, cool. So I blabbed on too long. Okay, thank you.